Gordon, the big engine, was thundering down the line with the express. The sun shone, the sky was as blue as his paint, and he was having a wonderful time. Another successful run, wouldn't you say, driver? Yes, indeed. Well done, Gordon. Hello, Gordon. How was your express run? It was probably the most splendid run I've had for years, Donald. That's what happens when you're the fastest engine on the island. You're always on time. Donald groaned. He knew all too well about Gordon's infamous boasting. Well, now that you brought up the topic of speed, did you know that on the mainland they have these things called high-speed trains? I've never seen one myself, but the diesels over at the works say that they have a diesel engine at each end and reach speeds no steam engine has ever reached before. Two diesel engines at each end? How disgraceful. I'm sure I could go just as fast as those boxes on wheels, maybe even faster. Is that so? The last time you tried to break another engine's speed record, I seem to recall your dome came off on the viaduct. Stuff and nonsense, it could happen to any engine. That was just a coincidence. Really? Uh, from what Edward told me, you were lucky to remain on the rails instead of ending up in a field at the rate you were going. That's because Edward is an old clamped out steam engine who hasn't seen anything close to actual speed in years. Ah, well, whatever you say. But those high speed trains were built with speed in mind. And so was I. And with that, Gordon weeched angrily away. Gordon normally pulls the express every day. It is always full and heavy as many people come to see Sir Top Bat's railway. The temperatures had dropped significantly over the course of the night, and by morning the rails were wet and sleety. The coaches had been shunted under the station roof, so when Gordon backed onto them, he had to sit outside in the cold. Come along, we don't want to be late. Don't make such a fuss. We'll get moving eventually. For Gordon, eventually met an eternity. At last, however, the guard blew his whistle, and Gordon jerked forward. Come along, come along. But then there was trouble. Gordon had jerked forward much too quickly, and a surge of water rushed forward in his boiler, leaving Gordon's wheels spinning furiously on the rails. Despite his best efforts, his driver couldn't shut off steam, and Gordon's wheels spun and spun, but neither Gordon or his train seemed to move at all. Help! Help! Someone stop this at once! An inspector was called to see what was the matter, but he too couldn't do anything. Gordon's wheels spun and spun for what felt like an eternity, until at last, he ran out of steam, and his driver closed the regulator. Gordon stopped to a standstill, and silence fell upon the station. Much to Gordon's dismay, Donald had been called to take Gordon and his train to the works. Well, 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 whatever do we have here? Gordon remained silent. Built for speed, were you, Gordon? You certainly didn't go very far. Donald laughed, and then he took the train to the works. At the station, to Gordon's surprise, he saw Sir Top Hat on the platform. Well, Gordon, trying to break speed records again? I... uh... Never mind, I don't want to hear it. You've delayed the express immensely, and the passengers are all very cross indeed. When you return from the works, I'll have you pull some good strings. Perhaps that will put this record-breaking nonsense to rest once and for all. On the night of his return, Gordon hoped the sheds would be empty, but they weren't. Well, Gordon, do you plan on any record-breaking tomorrow? Don't be silly, Henry. Gordon would much rather go ice skating instead. Nonsense, you two. Gordon's going back to the works tomorrow to get his dome removed. All the engines laughed, except for Gordon, who thought that the other engines were being very silly indeed. The weeks passed, and Gordon was still kept on goods work. One afternoon, Gordon arrived at Vickerstown. Right on time as usual, Gordon. Gordon said nothing. He had become accustomed to the usual goods work. Hello, Gordon. Still pulling the goods, are we? Ah, oh, well, someone has to do it, so engines like me won't. 
Gordon tried to look away, hoping Spencer would just ignore him. You know, I've been seeing Murdoch come in with the Express more and more often ever since you pulled off that little stunt several weeks back. Perhaps Sir Topham Hatt will make him the permanent Express engine and keep you on the sidelines with those dirty old trucks. Was that a threat? Are you trying to threaten me with Murdoch? I'm sure that Murdoch can't stand the Express as much as I can stand pulling these good strains. It's whatever you want it to be, my dear engine. Now I must be off. Us Express engines have a timetable to keep, you know. You good engines don't have to fret. As long as it all gets delivered eventually, you get off scot-free however late you are. Spencer laughed and then he roared away, leaving a rather upset Gordon behind. That night, as he entered the sheds, Gordon found Murdoch in the berth next to him. Murdoch, do you enjoy pulling passengers? It has its benefits, I suppose. The coaches certainly are much more nicer than the trucks. However, it's all work at the end of the day, isn't it? Just work? Just work? Murdoch! I'll have you know there is a world of difference between goods and passengers, and... Careful, Gordon. Your safety valve's about to burst from the looks of it, and we don't want our Premier Express engine heading back to the works a second time now, do we? Well, yes, but... Donald has a point, Gordon. Now I think it's time to play sensible engine and go to sleep. Gordon remained silent, as all the engines in the shed laughed. The next morning, Gordon awoke to find his driver standing in front of him. Good news, Gordon! Sir Topham Hatt's decided to put Murdoch back on Good's work and has allowed you to take the express again! How splendid! We must fill up with coal and water at once. And with that, Gordon bustled away. However, as Gordon entered the yards, he found a workman with a red flag at the siding that led to the coal hoppers. The points are jammed! You'll have to wait until we have them fixed. It shouldn't be long now. Why can't we just use another hopper or find another siding to you? All the other hoppers are empty, and all the other sidings are filled with trucks. And I take it you don't want to play a common tank engine today, so you'll just have to wait. After some time, the points were repaired, and Gordon steamed up to the hopper. As he filled up, Gordon began to cough and splutter. I feel stuffed up. It must be the coal. It looks like we've gotten a bad lot for today. Never mind, we'll just have to make do with it. Come on, we're late enough as it is already. No slipping today, eh, Gordon? What infernal cheek. I can assure you, Donald, I have no intention of slipping up again. I hope. He needn't have worried. By the time Gordon rushed to the junction, he had made up all his lost time and was speeding down the line nicely. However, as they approached Edward Station, Gordon's firemen began to make up the fire. Let's make a good run for the hill where you've got the steam to do it. I don't trust this low-grade coal. At the station, a party of wedding guests, all in their best clothes, were standing on the platform. As Gordon roared through, puffing hard for the hill, smoke from the newly made fire streamed from his funnel. He disappeared into the distance, leaving a black smoke screen on guests and all. Waving hands to Gordon became shaking fists as the guests ran angrily into the station master's office. As they arrived in Vickerstown, an inspector delivered a message straight to Mr. Toppenhack. His message was short, but it wasn't very sweet. Well, 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 Gordon. Trying to blow out steam in stations now, are we? Now listen, Gordon. Blowing out steam and ashes at a station is like blowing your whistle at said station. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Pay him no mind, Gordon. He's just trying to get the better of you. How could I help it, though? It wasn't my fault the smoke was dirty. It was all because of those jammed points back at the yards and the bad coal. Never mind about that, Gordon. Where would I be if I got upset or annoyed every time someone called me smelly, eh? Anywho, so it's good for the garden. Or at least that's what my driver says. But not for new clothes. On the return journey, Gordon was extra cautious on the way home. But it just wasn't his lucky day. Sir so Topham had made a journey to Edward Station to apologize to the wedding guests. He had done his best and was waiting for another train to take him back to the big station. 
When Gordon thundered through, clouds of dark black smoke shot from his funnel and nestled all over Sir Top and Hat. As he arrived at the station, Gordon found another inspector waiting for him. Sir Topham Hatt says that Gordon blew ashes and smoke all over him as he raced through Wellsworth with the Express. I did not. I was being extra cautious. I can't help it. That's what it says, so there it is. He'll speak to Gordon when he gets home. Gordon returned to the sheds that evening with many of the engines waiting for him. What's this now, Gordon? Trying to wish all your passengers now, are we? Now, now, Gordon. No dignified engine would do such a thing, would they, Duck? Yes, indeed. You wouldn't see such a thing on the Great Western, or any railway for that matter. Truly a new low for Gordon, isn't it? A new low? I think the passengers considered a new high, seeing as they're not being thrown about in their coaches for once. All the engines laughed, except, of course, for Gordon, who quietly tried his best to go to sleep. <laughs>